Good afternoon, everyone. So my project is a station which de determines the presence of a face mask and measures the temperature for your touch. As we know, during the pandemic, a lot of places require everyone who enters to have their temperature measured and also for the face mask to be worn. In many places, it's done by a specialized person, but if businesses or establishments do not want to dedicate their personnel to this, they can also install these stations. These automatic stations verify the temperature of a person and also presence of mask on their face. Such station could cost over a thousand dollars. This price, eleven $1 hundred and forty dollars, is the current price on Amazon for such station. Now you can order them in bulk from China for about two hundred to four hundred dollars a piece, and then wait a couple of months to uh, for them to arrive. But it's usually something that is required now and not months in advance. And also, it still could be prohibitively high for some small businesses. So my solution to that was to develop a small portable station with a price under $100, which could be built by anyone. So the way I designed it is I decided to build it on the base of a Raspberry Pi with the use of tiny ML, OpenCV and other lit, uh, libraries, and then hosted on a local app with the direct feedback right there and then. Now I'll demonstrate you how it works. So this is in real time. And as you can see, the, the station determines that my temperature is 93 degrees and I'm not wearing a mask. This is done by Raspberry Pi camera and an IR thermometer pointed directly at me currently running on my Raspberry Pi. So for the thermometer, I use the MLX 9614 uh, IR thermometer, completely touchless, is good for determining temperature up to about four or five feet. However, due to the wide range of view, it would be better to have it hmm, pointed directly at the body part of which you want to measure, such as when I was sitting here, my Raspberry Pi sits in front of my TV along with the sensors, so its field of view was probably as wide as my entire face and probably some of my shirt, hence why the reading was only 93 degrees rather than 95 or 97 that my skin temperature probably would be. It's uh, It uses the SM bus and IC2 I square C uh, communication protocols. Along with that, I have a five inch uh, TFT display, which is not currently connected as I'm displaying it on my the actual television in order for everyone to be able to see what it's showing. And then I'm using the RPI cam version one. It's a small one megapixel camera connected over an embedded CSI bus. So the way I designed this model, uh, given the hardware limitations that I encountered, I decided to identify my restrictions first prior to picking the model for facial detection. My initial, I have a one gigabyte of GDDR2, I mean, I'm sorry, I have one gigabyte of DDR2 memory, it's relatively slow. Have an, it's an embedded graphics with no dedicated GDDR memory, which means that I have to operate on CISC rather than the RISC which will increase my processing times. And I'm using a 1.2 gigahertz quad core processor with a pretty low cache. So the number of operations I can conduct simultaneously isn't that much. Based on those restrictions, I initially went with the OpenCV HAR uh, facial detection algorithm. The problem with that was, is that it had very low accuracy, even though I was using a CPU to process, which allowed that to be ran on Raspberry Pi. But because it required someone to remain steady for a relatively long time, and, it, and even non, any non-frontal shots where they would be looking slightly up, down, left, or right, did not grant me the accuracy I wanted, I decided to upgrade. I upgraded it to OpenCV DNN, which is 
regarded to as a better version of her in almost every aspect. It gave me a very good accuracy. It was the table able to determine my face in almost every position and even under poor lighting. However, because of its high RAM usage and my limited amount of RAM, I would have to remain still for quite a bit for a few seconds prior for it to be able to determine my, my presence of my face in the picture. That did not really suit my purposes, so I decided to look elsewhere. And this is when I found the Lib Hog. It, it is lightweight and it's capable of running relatively real time without someone requiring to pause in front of a camera for a few seconds at a time and remain still in order for algorithm to determine their face. And the only issue that came with it is that it was, it had, hard, it had issues determining the presence of a face under poor lighting conditions when there was like, let's say a shadow over half of the face. However, for my intents and purposes, I saw that an acceptable counter and still was able to proceed with it as most likely these kind of things will be used in the areas with good lighting. On my model, I got a 98.8% accuracy on my training data and about 96.1% accuracy on my validation. Now, given that happens when the algorithm analyzes each frame, so if you stand in front of a camera even for a second, it will probably be at least, it will be at least 10 frames that will be analyzed. Therefore, it's almost guaranteed that the face will be detected within a matter of a second or two. The way it works is the, uh, the, the, the live feed from the camera gets, uh, is, uh, uh, gets analyzed frame by frame and the overlays by OpenCV are applied to it. This is, uh, then this, uh, this is also, this video feed is streamed to Flask directly on a local host and displayed in real time. Algorithm is also runs on each frame and then gives back the feedback. So once the face is detected, it will determine the presence of a face mask. And also will give, uh, at this point, it will also read the temperature from the sensor. Now, as far as the costs go, I compiled this, uh, the, the, all the components on Amazon and it roughly costs about $90 to build it from scratch. With the same time, it would probably, it costs only $78 to build it on AliExpress. However, shipping makes it prohibitively expensive. I also ran the numbers for using Alibaba by ordering these parts in bulk. And it's somewhere between 40 and $43 if you order in 100 plus units. However, the shipping will probably also cost a lot. So therefore it would increase the overall price per unit. Probably to over to about 60, $65 if you, if a, but about the same shipping price, similar shipping price, but for large number of components. The way I would improve this model is I would use a more specialized uh, microcontroller, perhaps with a higher, amount of RAM in order to allow for more than just about five to 10 frames per second, which I'm currently getting from, uh, from this Raspberry Pi right here. I would use uh, HD camera, mostly for aesthetic purposes, but it would slightly improve the model, but however, the model works even on poor grainy video, but to uh, give back a feedback with the less grainy video would perhaps uh, be a fine, uh, the customers will find it more aesthetically pleasing. I would not use an SM bus sensor as it's, uh, it's limited in terms of its communication capacity to only one uh, kilohertz. And I would use something with a little more response. Also, I have to calibrate this thermometer upon each use in order to verify its accuracy. And this is perhaps something that could be automated and automatic and and a, and a sense of temperature sensor calibration could happen automatically upon booting. Also, perhaps can, this could be done. Another thing I could do is uh, set up an, a remote SQL, MySQL server, and have a data logging where each each uh, each person entering would be logged, or perhaps those without the mask would be logged, and uh, this data would be stored 
remotely somewhere else. And this concludes my presentation. Here's my GitHub repo and my email. Thank you very much for your time.